when we are going outside of the country to win their tournament. This is like a fight that we are fighting them. But in a way of basketball, in a way of sport. And we are trying our best for this fighting to win in the outside of the country. Our main team at FEMA team, they are so new. Just it's about three or four years that we have national team. The coach did say that they are a little weak on the offense, on the shooting. They've only had one week to prepare at a time. They didn't support by the government. They support only by the Red Cross. As a journalist who has covered sports, I've witnessed its incredible power to unite not just individuals of diverse backgrounds, but an entire country. Yet very rarely do nations prioritize sports. This is especially true in poor countries, where sports could arguably have the most life-changing impact on athletes. Foreigners came to Afghanistan for the first time. They will think that Afghanistan is their second home. زندگی زن در فمسان در وضعیت بد قرار داره زن لطوکوب میشه گوشوگینیش بوریده میشه خود چل سال در افغانستان جنگ روان از مگرم فلج چیز نداشته باشه اما فلج رو که نمیال از از زیمت خود کار کرده داره Many here have grown up only knowing war with conflict having been a way of life for over four decades The National Afghanistan wheelchair basketball team is perhaps the prime example I'm on my way to meet Nilafar, the captain of the National Women's Wheelchair Basketball Team. Nilofar was just two years old when the Taliban attack left her with a disability. It's tough as is being female in Afghanistan, which has been consistently ranked by human rights groups as the worst place in the world to be a woman. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Welcome here. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Let's go. Okay, come on, Natasha. Oh, this is so cozy. Yeah, the way that it's cold. Much warmer. <laughs> are more and more people accepting women's wheelchair basketball? What was it like the first time you guys played? Mm, for the first time, it was it was not accepting with, for, with people. People are not accepting. Like some men were working uh, with with us in ICRC. No, they told too many bad words that they are not good players. They are not from good family because they come and play in public. Mm. For the first time when I was in Bali and I, uh, my sister posted some of my photos that we were the champion. A man came and commented. He didn't tell my sister that be proud of your sister or they did a good job. They said, oh, it's good that they still they have, have one hijab. Is it comfortable to play with a hijab? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you sweat? Yeah, it's not, it's not easy. What is it like to be disabled in Afghanistan and a woman? Disabilities are like a limit, limitation for a man. But for a woman, it's much different. They, they want to hide her even from the society or the... Oh, when I was at home and Taliban came to Afghanistan, it was war uh, everywhere. And a rocket hit it to our home. And I injured, I got injured, I got a spinal cord injury. And my brother died at that time. How old was your brother? Uh, I think he was about 16. Oh. Like this, I, I, I didn't remember too much. Having a disability makes them practically invisible. Afghan girls and women with disabilities are often denied medical treatment, education, and jobs. Nilofar considers herself lucky to have a job. She works at the International Committee of the Red Cross Orthopedic Center in Kabul, which rehabilitates Afghans with disabilities and employs them. 90% of the staff here have disabilities. Hi, Natasha. Uh, Welcome hello. to Kabul. Hi, oh, thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So this is the center. Yeah, this is uh, our center where we work. Okay. You know, it's a physical rehabilitation center, 
belong to ICRC, mm -hmm. one of the biggest uh, center in Afghanistan. We do physical rehabilitation for the patients here. Any patient with a physical and motor disability can be accepted. Because in terms of the rate or the sheer number of people that you see here compared to other countries, it is much greater because of that. Of course, the number of disability in Afghanistan is, is uh, much higher. We have five to six percentage. Uh, most of the people say it's, uh, it's uh, not war wound, but uh, somehow I'm telling you it's a war wound. Almost all of them, because if a person is not vaccinated due to war, but got polio, I'm telling it's a war affected, but indirect. Nowadays, the explosion is getting heavier and heavier and stronger. Most of the cases, bilateral amputation above knee. I faced a mine, I lost only one leg, below knee, but I can walk well. But nowadays, uh, I see landmine, usually they cut both legs above knees. Okay. So you also got amputated? Yes, I did. How old were you? Teenager. And it was a landmine as well? It was a landmine. You walk very well. Yes, I do. That is why I, I, I show an example to other patients, say you will be like me if you lost your leg, don't worry. It's okay. A member of the men's national wheelchair basketball team also lost his legs while playing with an explosive device as a child. He too works here, the same place that treated him years ago. He's a technician making orthopedic limbs. So when you're not doing this work, you play basketball? Yeah. So what is that like? Like what, what is it about basketball that you like? My job is like a friend. My friend is basketball. My job is to be a friend. I have a friend with basketball. I have a friend with my life. 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 I have a friend with basketball. یا هم بسیار تغییرات آمده و کل اگه مرا مشناس از افتر و صابر را آفرین شریش ها باسکت بولند دو تا را در تلویزون دیدیم و دیگه در بیرون بسیار دوست های زیاد فایده کردیم که دو تا را در تلویزون دیدیم که باسکت بول میکنی نه آه باسکت بول میکنم بسیار زیاد مشکل هست بسیار زیاد سخت است که توی یک وظیفه در افغانستان خصوصا بلخصوصا بر معلولین که ما را یک کس هستیم که دو پای ندارم اینجا ما اتو یک جای وظیفه داشته باشم خود یک وقت وقت خوش وقت فکر میکنم که ما واقعا خوش وقت هستیم که یک وظیفه دارم Put my full weight on it Oh! It was also the ICRC that introduced the sport of wheelchair basketball to the country in 2011 as part of its rehabilitation program. This basketball court is the training ground of the men's and women's national teams. For the first time in Afghanistan's history, both teams are training to qualify for the Paralympics in Tokyo. From my point of view, wheelchair basketball is not just a sport, it's a, like a lifestyle. You are going to have this lifestyle for a long time. Our relative is coming here to watch us. We are playing the basketball, so they, they proud us a lot because with the problems that we have in our legs, we, we can play this, this match or we can play basketball. So they, they proud us that, that these people can do something in their life. So the condori make it in the the condori make it in both of my car, but I don't make it in my car. I got Mushkila, so it's in the game, and we should be basketball. I got more like the store, the food, the stabashim, 
از بانکوک ما ایرا ان شاء میگم که پارالمپیک ام یک شهر افغانستان در مجموع رئیس جمهور اتا شاید ما را دعوت کنه ما بریم پیشش ما بسیار تشویق کنه اما سپورت ما در آینده به مسابقه های جاپان میریم سپورت ما کنه So you can sort of see a mix of skill set and some are faster than others. Oh! Someone just fell. Two of them actually. Wheelchair basketball can get rough with occasional falls, physical contact, and collision of wheelchairs. This makes it even harder for female athletes to convince their families to let them play. But these women are used to pushing boundaries in and out of the court. So I can't help but notice that you're the only woman in this room. Like everybody here yes. are men. Yes. Is that common? It's normal for me. and uh, I'm so happy. I play basketball and I like my sport. And in the week I play two days, mm -hmm. three hours. The most of thing we need time. Because we are here, we have to work all the day and um, gymnasium is blocked after the time that we we have time to come here. Because you have two professions. Mm. Yeah, I need my job. I have to support my family. The, I need the salary I receive from my working. And uh, also, basketball is important for me. Despite being national athletes, the teams don't receive any government support and train with limited facilities. But the fact that women with disabilities are allowed to play sports in Afghanistan is in itself a sign of progress in a country that continues to evolve. After the end of Taliban rule, men and women are again allowed to share public spaces, and Kabul is seeing more and more urban developments pop up. Moments like this, where the men's and women's national teams can come together are rare. For the Afghanistan team, this is the big leagues. The chance of a lifetime to qualify for the Paralympic Games. They need to win two of their first three games to make it to the top of their pool and advance to the next round. This year is their best chance yet to qualify. They've trained under Ali Abbas, a coach with an impressive track record, and has trained the Iran national team. Former American athlete Jess Mark, who started the wheelchair basketball program in Afghanistan is helping out. And they have an ace up their sleeve, top Afghan player Shapur Sarkabi. Shapur has been training in Germany, where he currently plays with the professional league. He is joining the national team for the first time in five years in a bid to get Afghanistan to the Paralympics. What everybody expects doesn't matter. It's all up to you guys. And you guys playing the way you know how to play up here. You guys remember Musto ahead? Yes. 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 That's how you have to play to beat a team like this. One fist. The beginning was, was really different because the men 
kind of took to it with no reservation. I mean, other than the, the personal nervousness about dealing with me on that first day, <laughs> really, they were gung-ho, they were ready to play. The women, on the other hand, because it's so unusual for a, a girl or a woman to play a sport in Afghanistan, much less a disabled one, the women said, okay, we're willing to do this, but only if no one can see us play. So we had to put screens around the courts where they were practicing, and so that they could pr practice in private, and kind of, they were, they were really excited to do it, but they were really concerned that it would reflect poorly on their families or themselves if other people in society saw them playing the sport. So everyone was in pretty high spirits coming here in the bus. Everyone was excited to play this you know, on the national team and this international tournament. But the coach did say that they are a little weak on the offense, on the shooting. They've only had one week to prepare at a time. So they focus on the defense. So Because while they don't have very strong shooters, they have a very strong defense. But let's see how that plays out in the coming games. The men's team doesn't play as well as they expect to on day one. The team feels splintered and tense and is unable to handle the stress on the world stage. The pressure also proved to be a lot for star player Shapur, who was off his game. The pressure also proved to be a lot for star player Shapur, who was off his game. Shapur was one of Afghanistan's first ever wheelchair basketball players. He stood out immediately when he first held a ball at 12 years old. In 2014, when he was just 19, he was part of the first Afghan team to play an international tournament in Italy. He disappeared the evening before the team's most important game. Shapur had defected from Afghanistan. Today, he is a refugee in Germany. When I was a child, I, that was a bad experience for me. Yeah. I lost my father and uh, my sister and my brother. Yeah, I don't know, I shame every time for in class because I, I was one, I just only one person to come to school and go to on the city and clean something and uh, bring something to home and make warm our house and maybe many things change in my life but basketball changed I'm because of basketball here and maybe when there wasn't basketball I wasn't in Europe and I wasn't back here When you saw your team for the first time, how did you feel? I feel first shameful because they are... Because uh, you can't uh, stop people to speak, you know. 
in social media and now in Facebook, Instagram, like that thing. I think I wasn't happy first time I see it. When I say I was happy, no, I, I first thing I shame it. But I say, okay, trust you go and say welcome. I didn't sleep, I don't know, until two o'clock night, like that. It sounds like you haven't forgiven yourself for doing that. Mm, really not. I'm a hard person. I'm, I'm not crying for everything. Even my father died, but I didn't cry, I think. But I cried. When I back, when I hear I back, too much nothing. I still feel support, but me, I think. Uh, we wanted to, we wanted to show, yeah, we, we were hard. We want, we came here just to win. That's why we tried too much to play with uh, all the team strong. The women's team only started competing internationally two years before this match. They are going up against teams who train five days a week and are full-time athletes. But what they lack in experience and skills, they make up for in resilience. The Afghanistan women's team is used to overcoming obstacles. <laughs> thinking that uh, we will win and if we win the others we will qualify for to kill but when I saw the films that some of my friends took with mobile when I saw oh how how I played I didn't want I, I wanted to play much better <laughs> Thailand is much strong and they play different the other teams that they were in Group B with us, no one of them are this much strong to press Afghanistan for 40 minutes. But Thailand can do it. They had five days a week, they had training, uh, basketball and fitness. But we did just two, two times a year. Uh, for one, one week, we had a camp in Afghanistan and I know that was not enough. That's why uh, we couldn't play where we want. The men's team really needs to win this match against Saudi Arabia, a team they have beaten before, to at least stay in the running. interesting game because the coach actually got kicked out because he was too emotional in the beginning of the game so they got two technical fouls and basically the coach isn't on the court he's not allowed to coach the team Shoot. Ah! When we were, I was leaving the court for, for our game, I was thinking, what will happen? What will happen for Afghanistan? The score of Afghanistan was higher than uh, Arab Saudi. But um, the end of our, our game, I asked the Milton what happened. They said, we lose the game. I'm 
مال به سابقه عربستان که باختیم با اون لرزه من گفتیم دیگه ما خلاش نیم ما نمیتونیم را پیدا کردیم اون سابقه دوکیو With the men out of the tournament, Afghanistan's Paralympic dreams lie on the shoulders of the women. It was my first match in Korean country, so I'm very. It was it was new for me. Yeah. It was new for me. I try as much as I could. So I'm gonna lose. We had a big wish. We thought that we will qualify. All were count counting in Afghanistan women team, even we. But unfortunately, when we couldn't qualify, it was it was really heartbreaking. And the situation is not good in Afghanistan. We, the, 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 the dream of basketball to build in the orthopedic center, see the patient, and, and the mentally go down. Patient without leg, patient without hand, not in the, the complex is good and very bad. The government must recover, must suffer, and more and more days for the future if they want, if they want to improve. We think just about one Afghanistan, that we want to make proud of this country. It's not important they will win or lose, but we will stay at the end of the day. And also they do the same. Because on that time we were not thinking about the time from Kabul, Ghazni, or Mazar, or Hira. And when we support each other for one Afghanistan, it, it makes us happy. Why did you play even when everyone was against it? Cause, cause I understood that I will improve and I will, uh, I will do something good for the girls that they are in Afghanistan and looking at me. Maybe I will inspire some other girls that they don't have this, uh, um, they can't fight with this all in the society. But I will be the one to fight with this. 